brothers and sisters, we want to welcome you to this apostolic ordination today. Uh, we want to believe God that you've come with an open heart to learn and also to be a blessing to us as a church. We believe that uh, Life Church International and myself and my wife, uh, we need the blessing from the rest of the body of Christ. Why? Because wherever we go ministering in this country and all over the world, people keep on prophesying, speaking into our, pro, our apostolic ministry. Uh, we, we are so grateful today that we are gathered for prayer, for, for listening to the, to the Spirit of God through the man of God that he has put together today, uh, a prophetic uh, presbytery, men that are seasoned in the gospel, that are going to pour the oil, pray, you know, declare and release us and usher us. Uh, into the ministry. An apostle is one called of God. An apostle is one with a mission. An apostle is one with a task to accomplish for the kingdom. An apostle is a man or a woman ordained of God and called with a divine ability to go and take land for the kingdom of God, to set order in the church of Christ, and to impart grace to the body of Christ for her to carry out our full mandate. An apostle is the messenger and the carrier of the message of Christ based on the particular time that he is called and the assignment that he is given at that particular time. The Bible says the church is built on the foundation of apostles and prophets. Apostle is one who can be able to give direction and fatherhood and uh, we really need, especially in these last days when there are so many false doctrines going on. Well, we know that an apostle, according to Ephesians 4, is uh, one of the, actually among the first listed gift in the fivefold ministry aspect. And we know that an apostle is one who has been given an express mandate by Jesus Christ to really lay the very basic principles and foundations of the church and ministry. An apostle is one who has received a specific commission from Christ to take the gospel to the whole world, beginning from Jerusalem <coughs> to Judea, Samaria, and to the other uttermost parts of the earth. An apostle is also somebody who has known that he has received that commission from Christ. Now David Juma um, is a man called of God with uh, evidence in his ministry. The man responded to the call of God. We've seen signs and wonders follow his ministry because those are the marks of an apostle. And he has the wisdom and the grace to lay foundation for the work of God and to build on that foundation within, within that wisdom. 21 years ago, I have watched this man very closely, in and out in church and outside the church, in his relationship with the people he works with, the, my relationship with him, his life in his, in his ministry, his life in his, in his family, and even the community. And this man, Apostle David Juma, he bears the marks of an apostle. His apostolic anointing is quite evident when you look at the level of spiritual operation, especially authority, is concerned. When he speaks or when he carries himself or when he ministers, you obviously sense a, an unusual uh, boldness that is not just boldness for the sake of it, but boldness that is backed by spiritual authority that can only be associated with uh, an apostolic anointing. Since Jesus, you know, left until he comes, we are in one dispensation. And in this dispensation, now there are the challenges. And Christ gave the church the mandate. And in this mandate, there are functions. And these functions are through apostles, through prophets, through teachers, as uh, Ephesians says. He bears the marks of an apostle. He is patient. He, he have a fruit of long suffering. I've seen him down, I have seen him up, I have seen him when he has money, the way he behaves when he has money, when he, how he behaves when he doesn't have money, when people are not very close to him. We also see his 
expansive work in terms of church planting and uh, impacting the church across the nations. You see, you'll find that he is not just limited to the local body. He is impacting nations and even some of the very great nations of the world. Nations like the United States, you know, in, in Europe, in Australia, and many, many other places, and Africa he included. So whenever he goes, you sense that breakthrough. Again, you also see the signs and wonders that follow his ministry. Healing, you know, prophetic uh, revelations and, you know, just speaking government into ministries and into people's lives and the bible truth uh, backs him for that or biblical evidence the results of his ministry back that the integrity of his life also uh, is evidence to his apostolic calling and therefore we recognize the calling on his life because you've been witnesses to the power and the grace of god on his life as i have moved with david in ministry uh, he has been very instrumental in helping me to preach and to learn how to serve the Lord in the ministry of the Word and to seek God. Uh, one of the things I love doing most and he has been there to support me is to speak to women. The other very important element that you see that accompanies ministry is his ability to attract and raise leaders that have a, a zeal and authority to also breakthrough in some very difficult situations. So whenever you find all those things that I've said, then you begin to see that indeed there is an anointing of an apostle on a man like David. David and I have been married for the last 15 years. All those years he has been in the ministry. And for me, it has been a, a blessing and a, a wonderful opportunity to learn of Christ himself through him and even in the ministry and also uh, to learn ministry and to grow from one level to another. I used to be a very uh, shy person in the beginning but over time as I've moved with him from one meeting to another and uh, as I have um, attended the Sunday services as he has preached. We need uh, apostles because apostles are men with a task. Apostles are people who are supposed to put the right perspective of things in the gospel. Today we need apostles as much as we need evangelists, as much as we need uh, teachers, as much as we need prophets, as much as we need pastors. We need apostles today. The whole mind of God and the desire of God is the finishing of the church. The way it is scattered, the way it has been going on, but also the finishing, the way church will finish, maybe the second, in his second coming. I personally believe, as I read scripture, the time has come for the body of Christ to begin to ordain apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. What we have seen in the past is a well, church tradition, we have no problem with tradition, but we, we feel passionate, I personally feel passionate that we can do what Jesus said. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.11, he gave some to the apostles, some prophets, some teachers, you know, evangelists and pastors, the fivefold ministry. Apostolic ordination is the recognition of spiritual authority, spiritual grace, and divine biblical mandate of ministry that sets somebody into a, a different order where he works within the universal body of Christ, even though he may be recognized by a portion of the body of Christ. But the fact is, his mandate is not ecclesiastical, it's spiritual. And that as a different uh, ball game, is a different ball game altogether. In fact, ordination is not for the sake of God. Ordination is for the sake of the people and the church. And when we ordain somebody, we are simply saying, we're in agreement that indeed, as a church, as a body of believers, we recognize the operation of the apostolic anointing on this man or this woman. The ordination of uh, uh, Apostle David Juma brings four things to the fore. One, it is the presbytery recognizing, acknowledging, endorsing, and releasing him 
the office that and ministry that we see in him, which God has ordained in him. So that will give him greater thrust. Second, it will elevate his spiritual authority in dealing the matters of ministry. Third, it will bring new direction to the work of God around the nations. Because anytime God ordains an, uh, an apostle, he gives him the mandate to set certain things in the spirit world as well as order in the, in the church system. And fourth, uh, the church of Christ will be richer in exemplifying these giftings that some think are, is, uh, are, are long gone or are for a certain era. When you see the evidence of a living apostle, it will bring the biblical truth to present reality. And that will help faith in every way. We need to look at today's world and see whether the same need that was there those days, whether we still have that need of the gospel today. Do we still need to preach the gospel to all areas? Do we still need to raise leaders? Do we still need a Paul identifying a Timothy and raising him to take over from Paul? Do we still need the John Marks and the Tituses? And I want to say because we still need them today, hence they need to have the apostles to still do those things that we saw the early church apostles to preach the gospel with signs and wonders, um, pioneer and break through new crowds, new levels, whether in a revelation, whether in geographical locations, uh, whether in confronting status or the people and their status uh, or gender. That need was there in the early church, it's still there today. It is the prerogative duty for an apostle one to give the light leadership or to define leadership, to collect a doctrine and to become a voice of direction into the next level where the church is going. You have, you, if we don't have apostles, we might get back to the, the, the dark age because the apostles, they are the carriers of God's voice. But we also must say that um... We must be careful not to rush into giving people titles, apostle, prophet, um, because the enemy uh, will be very happy to bring to us a counterfeit spirit and counterfeit apostolic, counterfeit prophetic. Um, my name is Charlene. Um, I'd like to welcome you all of you today to the ordination. My name is Sheila and I want to take this opportunity to congratulate my parents as they be ordained and I pray that God may bless them in whatever they do and I welcome all of you to the ordination. We're so grateful and we know that you'll be blessed today. May you uh, have time to worship, have time to meditate, have time to listen to scripture, have time to uh, connect with brothers and sisters. Uh, to us this is a great moment, this is a great day and we've been praying for it, seeking God, trusting God that our coming together will bring uh, such a great blessing. Uh, not only to us, but to the rest of the nation. We also want to ask you to partner with us. You know, we need prayers, we need money, we need uh, uh, open doors, we need, uh, you know, a good word. We need people who can champion what we are doing. And we want to invite you today, uh, as you leave this ground today, may you go with a heart to say, yeah, I'll pray for that ministry, I'll pray for that minister, I'll pray for the pastors there, I'll pray for the apostle, uh, I'll pray for his wife, Pastor Sunta, you know, I'll pray for the family. We invite you right now to take the moment and stand with us in the gospel because time has come for us Africans to begin to support our fellow Africans so that we can take the gospel to the rest of the world. God bless you and we know that you'll be blessed. Keep tracking us, keep following us up, get our materials, get our magazine, get the tapes, get the CDs, get the DVDs. Don't get out of this place without something in your hand that can bless you and take you to the next level. God bless you and be like you.